Today's been so boring. Stand here, guard this hill. What use does this hill have anyway? What the hell's that? Okay, now that's cool. I want one of those. What's up everybody, it's Dropship here and I'm going to be showing you how to get those F-35s along with a lot of other things into Armour 3's Alpha. First thing you're going to want to do is open up two different folders on your hard disk to see wherever it is you keep your game files. Now, you may notice that in the Armour 3 folder we've got pretty similar files to in the Armour 2 folder on this side. Now the Armour 2 has got an add-ons folder. And this is what we're going to be using to get your Armour 2 files like the F-35, A-10, the C-130J, all that kind of stuff. That's all going to go into Armour 3 and it's all going to work as well. Well, most of it's going to work. You'll see what I mean later on in the video. So what you want to do is go into the Armour 2 folder and open your add-ons. You have a massive list here of many gigabytes of files. Now, what you want to do essentially is go back out and copy that folder directly into your uh, Armour 3 folder. But you'll also notice there's already one there called add-ons. Don't do anything to that. That's completely unrelated. This is the Armour 3 add-ons and these are the Armour 2 add-ons. They're completely different. Don't mess either of them up. Otherwise you're going to mess about the entire game and it's going to glitch out. You're going to have lots of problems. So instead, create a new folder with the name at and then whatever you want to call it. So for example here, I've made one already called at Chernerus. That's going to be my reference point in the game. Open up this folder and create another folder called add-ons, just like this one here. So the simplest way of doing that, create your folder in the Armour 3, copy and paste the add-ons over here. Now open both of them up in each Explorer browser and you'll notice something. One of the lists is slightly shorter than the other. Here we have 147, here 162. That's because certain items in this list you cannot use uh, with this list over here. They just don't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out which ones they are, delete them uh, in this list, and then we're going to have a fully operational, or partially operational version of Armour 2 within Armour 3. So the first thing you want to get rid of is the Anims. Not the Animals, but the Anims. So here we have the Anims Anim uh, by sign files as well. Those three will interrupt the animations in Armour 3, so you'll get bugged out walking animations and other things like that. So you want to when they copy over into these, uh, into this folder rather, delete them in this folder. Leave them in your Armour 2 folder, but delete them in the Armour 3. The next lot that you want to get rid of in here is your editor. Three files here, accounting for about whoa, 92, 93 kilobytes. Nothing much, just get rid of those in here. Leave them in the uh, Armour 2 file. Remember, you don't want them in here. Next up is your modules. Now this one's slightly bigger, a couple of megabytes. Get rid of this one in here as well, so you want your modules and both by sign files as well. That will mess up your game massively in this one if you haven't got rid of them. Next up is your uh, UI. So get rid of the, ooh, these six files here, UI, both by signs, and UI fonts are both by signs. Now getting rid of these will also make sure that you haven't got any glitches going on that you could otherwise avoid. So to reiterate that, you want to get rid of the anims, animations, you want to get rid of the editor, the modules, and the UI. Once that's done and those are deleted, you can close this folder here, and you'll have 147 items in this list here instead. Now this is quite a big folder, I think it's a couple of gigabytes. <coughs> Yeah, seven and a half gigabytes. And when paired with the Armour 3 add-ons as well, six and a half gigabytes, you know, you're dealing with quite a big game. So essentially what happens here is that the game loads much slower. It's not the end of the world, but it does take a lot longer. So you've got your at Chernerus file. Now what? Well, if you're using Armour 3 on Steam, which I'm guessing most of you will be, you simply right-click Armour 3 Alpha, hit Properties, 
set launch options and then add this into your uh, launch options hyphen mod equals at generous now the at generous is going to be whatever you've named the folder so if you named it at armor 2 then it will be called at armor 2 the other two here are just so that it loads up slightly quicker by skipping the introduction hit close on that and as soon as you hit play it will then load up the installed version of armor 3 with the armor 2 files the alternative way to do it i will demonstrate in a moment now when you begin to load armor 3 you will get a pop-up message this is an error saying something about ca characters you'll also get this error here hit ok or close all on both of them because they don't matter whatsoever you can still play the game you'll just have to go through these every single time you load up the game unless you deactivate the mod which is quite simple simply remove the at uh, mod, sorry mod equals at generous from the launch options and it's all fine so close all on that alternatively hit close and it comes up with another one here and you'll notice that in your options and expansions you now have generous here at generous now if you have the standalone version of this, which I doubt you would, but you might do, um, if you click on the generous, it might not be hi uh, highlighted there. Simply click enable down here and it will be fine. Uh, if you're using the app mod uh, startup on the options, this cannot be disabled unless you remove it from the uh, launch options. So again, if you're using Steam, you'll have to remove it from the launch options first before you can disable it in the game. Hit OK, and now as you can see, it's running fine. But if you'll notice in the editor, we now have Utes, Chernerus, and Stratus to choose from, which is pretty sweet. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up Stratus just because it's a slightly smaller map and loads relatively quickly in comparison to Chernerus and Utes because it's already part of the game. Now, load times are still going to be significantly slower, so you'll have to bear with me. Again, it's loading about 16 gigabytes worth of game as opposed to the 6 gigabytes that it normally is. Okay, so once we're in the editor, you'll notice that nothing's changed at all. It's still perfectly operational. But there are a few things I need to point out to you. If you want to use the Armour 2 vehicles and uh, certain weapons and things like that, you can, but some of them don't work and you cannot use any Armour 2 AI in Armour 3 because otherwise the game will crash. So if you're going to place any characters, any AI, any players, um, what you need to do is if you're using Blue 4, Op 4 or Civilian, you want to make sure that the faction is blue if it's Blue 4, red if it's Op 4, or Civilians if it's Civilian. You can't use Chernerus, Russia, uh, Russia Insurgents or USMC CDF. It just doesn't work, the game will crash. So I'm just going to place down a man, a rifle man, and that's going to be me. And I'm just going to place down some objects. So if you want to use the aircraft, simply go into the empty units, and it's uh, air, and you've got this massive list now, which has got all the aircraft from Armour 2 and Armour 3. Now, the majority of them work, certain ones don't. The uh, I've noticed the AV-8B cannot take off for some reason, in Armour 3. Um, it seems to be locked into vertical takeoff and landing mode but it doesn't work properly so just don't use it. Uh, the other one that doesn't work properly is the A10 and the SU-34. Neither, neither the A10 nor the SU-34 will actually take off on their own for some unknown reason. The other thing you need to notice is that any uh, vehicles here that have got uh, ground bombing capabilities they won't actually work in this game. Um, so like this one here, or even this one, the A10 has got uh, bombs that it can drop. These work in Armour 2, but they don't work in Armour 3 because they obviously haven't been coded properly yet. So for example's sake, I'm going to spawn an F35. Um, that's fine information, I'll do that there. And just plop that right next to the player so that I can show you. Another thing you need to notice is that if you do want to have AI flying around in these aircraft, you can do that, but you have to do a little bit of trickery with the initializations. So say I want uh, an AC-130, sorry, a C-130 to fly overhead. All you have to do is name the C-130, so I'm going to call it C-1. 
And the initial uh, initialization you want to do is type in this fly in height and then pick, uh, pick a height. Normally they stay at around about 100 meters regardless of what you type in, so I'm just going to put 50. And you also need to change the special, this is very important, to flying, otherwise it's going to spawn on the ground or in the water, depending on where you place it. Hit OK. Angle it somewhere that you want it to go, so I want it to pass over in front of me. As I'm getting into the F35. So if we place him roughly here, you'll still notice that it's just an empty C-130. So if I played this now, it would just fall out of the sky, which isn't particularly useful. So what I'm going to do is, as well is place another unit, remembering that you, if you want to use these, you can't use the USMC, you have to use blue. I'm going to place a helicopter pilot. It doesn't have to be a pilot, it's just, I, it can be. And for the initialization, you type in this, move in driver, and then the name of the aircraft, so C1. And that will place them as the driver. Whoop, moving driver, sorry. This will place them as the driver of this aircraft. Now, to make the aircraft move the way you want it to, select the pilot and set a waypoint. So if I set a waypoint here, then he will fly over my head. Now, if you move him behind the aircraft, it will show you the route that it will take, roughly. So I'm going to make him fly over there and then all the way over here, just for example's sake. In fact, let's make him bank as well so you can see what that's like. So let's have him bank over here. The AI is quite good at handling the uh, aircraft in this game, so let's move him over there. Uh, I'll also place some things that I can show you don't work. So again, I'll use the A10 Warthog to show you that it doesn't work. And I will also use, although this works, it's not particularly brilliant, the M1A1. Uh, there's also issues with one of the artillery vehicles, and I cannot for the life of me remember which one it is. I think it's this one here. So, yes, I think it is. So let's just plop that down as well and give it a preview. And there we go. You also get another error message come up here. Just completely ignore it, close, and everything's fine. See? There we go, there's our C-130 being piloted by our expert AI. Banking just as I expected it would do. He's quite low down there, so unless he corrects his height, he's probably going to end up crashing. Fantastic! Now, let's have a look, and we'll go for the ones that don't work first, because it'll make it easier. Okay, our A-10 appears to have not spawned in. That's rather odd. I'll double check that in the editor afterwards, but it could be that there's an issue with that. Oh, poor C-130. Okay, let's use the M1A1. This has got some issues with it, as you're about to see. It starts up fine. Certain engine noises in vehicles don't work properly, so if you're driving one of the cars, chances are that the engine noise isn't going to be right. But whatever you do, don't suddenly slam the brakes on in the Abrams, because this happens. Now, it is quite cool that you can do a reverse wheelie in the Abrams, but uh, it's also not particularly realistic, so I'd advise to stay away from it. Another thing that's worth noting is that a lot of these vehicles, because they haven't got the correct physics in them at the moment, so obviously they're going to be introducing new tanks and things like that they all have different weight ratios and things like that that have been incorporated into the coding so this probably wouldn't have gained air and wouldn't be doing this kind of thing if it was the tank that they're going to be using in the full game so let's get out actually I suppose I can show you the gunner's seat the gunner's pretty damn strong as you'd expect I guess now naturally it's going to be a little bit buggy because it's still an alpha and also the fact that we're running essentially two games here. Now let's jump into the artillery vehicle. This is one of my favourite vehicles. In the uh, full game of Armour 2 you can use this very effectively as uh, the mobile artillery and you can access the artillery computer as well. In this you can't really do that. You just have to fire it as you see it. Which is quite cool. But as soon as you get into the driver's seat, again, I'd advise that you do your absolute best not to turn it too quickly at high speed. 
because I have seen it roll. So let's get it up to about 60 kph. And then there we are, suddenly break and roll. And that's uh, now an upside down artillery. Not particularly useful, if I'm honest. But one of the things that does work is the helicopters and the aircraft. Certain aircraft, as you can see, the uh, Warthog hasn't spawned there. I'm sure I'll find out why soon. Now, one thing you want to notice with the aircraft is if you fly inverted, like I do, that you cannot invert the controls for the aircraft just yet with the mouse. You can still have it set so that W is nose down, S is nose up, and uh, stuff like that, but you can't actually have it so that the mouse down is nose up just yet. If that's right, let me just think. I'll just move it into uh, a takeoff position. Right, so if I move the mouse up now, yeah, there we go. It, it moves the nose of the plane up, which is inverted to how I'd normally have it. I'd normally have it so up is down, and down is up. So, the planes on this fly really well. Let's gear up. Apart from the inverted controls, which is particularly confusing. I can't remember if in Armour 2 you got those vapor trails on the sides of the planes or not, but uh, in this you do, which is pretty cool. Can't complain about vapor trails. So let's go through the controls here with the weapons. The other weapons are just fine, there's nothing wrong with them at all. But things like this, the GBU, so you've got your ground bomb, that doesn't work. Let's uh, hover over here and drop both of them. Absolutely sod all happens. You do hear an explosion eventually, but you don't see the explosion, and I don't think it actually does any damage whatsoever. So that's that. Now let's change to the Sidewinder. The sidewinders work perfectly fine. Bam! Dead. Bam! Dead. So, yeah, as I said, certain vehicles will work perfectly, certain vehicles don't work so perfectly. It just depends on which ones you like to use. Another thing that's good is that the uh, this mod essentially, it's not really, well I suppose it is a mod, allows you to eject, which is something that's been missing from Armour 3's Alpha. And something else that I love as well is the freefall. So as the guy is plummeting to his death right now, uh, essentially I'm going to have one more look at the A10 and see why that didn't work. <coughs> and uh, essentially that's armor 2 in armor 3 you can also load generous and it looks slightly higher resolution than it did before and that's about it really to be honest ah that's probably why flying none okay let's try that one so I'll demonstrate to you the A10 failing to take off Poor C-130. Bye. I salute you, sir. With my binoculars. Ooh, nasty. Uh, another thing you'll notice as well is that the crash animations and things like that are still from Armour 2 as well, so the wreckages and things like that aren't perfect. Now the A-10, you can get into it fine. It does all that animation fine. You know, the interior of it looks pretty nice. It looks... Well, it looks like it did in armor 2. Start it up just fine, the canopy closes, and you can hear the engines spooling up, but it doesn't actually go anywhere. This is full throttle, no brakes held, and it's just not moving anywhere. You can use the uh, flaps and panels and things like that, but everything else, just no. For some reason, it does not work. Even the flaps down, it still won't go anywhere. It can still fire, so you can see that it's actually operational. But uh, yeah, it just won't take off. So that's it, that's your Armour 3 playing Armour 2 vehicles. And uh, it is pretty damn good.